And it's also wonderful for me to introduce a good friend for many years, Paul Estabrooks, formerly with Open Doors International, the founding director of Open Doors Canada, and recently retired. So, Paul, I don't know what title I give you, but... Uh, <laughs> Just a go for it guy. Go for it guy. Yeah. You know, it was interesting because we were together recently in California at uh, Open Doors US and Open Doors International. Recently, I started with the ministry. And you were honored down there after 38 Eight years. years. Yeah. Tell me, it's, did the time go fast? Oh, yes, it always does. But uh, we started as missionaries in the Philippines, uh, living in London, Ontario, with Far East Broadcasting I'm, Company, yeah. FEBC Radio. And I began traveling into China and uh, to hear how the broadcasts were coming in because we were getting no response. It was totally closed in those days. And I had a chance to go with a Canadian Friendship Tour. And that started my, just like you, my first encounter with persecuted Christians. And that changed my life. And the next thing I knew, I was working with Open Doors. Why well, we have? Maybe that's why we get along well. We're, <laughs> yes. we're broadcasters in our, you know, kind of that's in our right. vocation at the beginning, yeah. and then caught this vision for the persecuted church. And I know we were talking about this. The you know recently we we're in California. In 1988, I was a youth pastor at a church just south of Edmonton in Leduc, Alberta. And while I was there, there was a presentation of Open Doors. Mm -hmm. And you may have actually been I the speaker, probably. probably. Was, and yeah. that's something, and my wife would say to me for years, something got caught in your heart about the persecuted church. And so is, is that what happened for you as you started to hear the stories of persecuted oh, yeah. believers? Yeah, definitely. It was, it was a quite a unique situation uh, because they weren't able to do anything for themselves. And just like was shared earlier, the first thing they asked for is prayer. Mm -hmm. They didn't ask me to do anything else, although it wasn't long before their need for Bibles became very obvious. But, uh, you know, their, their perseverance and their story, I think that's really it, you know, the, the ability to live by faith when things aren't good. Um, is that's the underlying story of almost all of these people. And I know that it has inspired me, it's inspired you and anybody that works with the persecuted church and hopefully churches across Canada that are hearing the message. Now, you're also the founding, as I mentioned, the founding director of Open Doors Canada. Uh, you started going around, speaking in churches, talking to Christians mm -hmm. about persecuted believers in the last uh, part of the program, talked about the theology of persecution, which mm -hmm. not everybody wants to hear about. How have you seen it over the years? Have Christians in Canada become more receptive to the uh, to the message of the persecuted church, or has it kind of been yes. always sort of the same? No, I think it's become more receptive, and it's become more aware. There's more awareness. I think one of the key turning points was mid '90s. Uh, Paul Marshall wrote a book called "Their Blood Cries Out." Right. Remember yes. that? Oh yeah, I read it. And uh, that book began to hit more and more people and make them aware. Uh, he, you know, they didn't perceive him as being a puff for any organization. He was just a, a researcher who was really telling the story like it is. And from that point on, um, IDOP Sunday began where we remember the persecuted Day of for the, yeah. church. Uh, and the awareness began, began rising significantly. And as, of course, as people travel, um, they begin to realize the reality of it all. For me, I think that kind of the turning point is I would hear all these stories, I'd document them in video reporting and that, and then working with Glenn Penner in The Shadow of the Cross, the book he wrote on the theology of persecution, really which was a fulfillment of Pastor Richard Wormbrand's ministry, The Voice of the Martyrs, mm -hmm. and he called it, I think, martyrology or sufferology. <laughs> yeah. And Glenn really was kind of the, one of the first guys to actually put it yeah. all together and, you know, to help it make sense. So, for, we would, so we'd hear the stories of persecuted believers, we would care about that, but then you add the theology, and that's something you've been doing for many years, Paul. Yes, well, that became part of um, our, our transition in Open Doors was providing Bibles, which was the encouragement they needed. Once, once That was Brother Andrew, right? Yeah, exactly. That was why he started. That's why he became known as God's smuggler. That was the request. But then they began saying, well, now we have Bibles, but we need training. We have young leaders that don't have any training. And, and then you have the whole phenomenon of... Uh, background believers from other faiths who come to faith in Jesus but don't really understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. They face persecution almost immediately and they say, why is this happening and how are we supposed to respond? And so all of those questions began to develop. Our program was called Standing Strong Through the Storm 
and it was designed for these kind of believers. And from there, we've also uh, made it an academic course at a seminary. Uh, Dr. Jim Cunningham and I teach it at Axe Seminary out on the West Coast or the wet coast. West coast. Or... Uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, we use Glenn Penner's book as one of the textbooks, of course, and Dr. Joseph Tan, who was the Romanian pastor mm -hmm. who spent years in prison, he's probably the one uh, persecuted Christian background person who has actually done academic work on the topic in his book. And uh, so it's it's been a real uh, interesting experience to be able to develop uh, a, a full biblical concept of wh why and how do you respond. Those are the big things I think that... A friend of mine who traveled um, to China and he was teaching the theology of persecution or in the Shout of the Cross course mm. uh, from the Voice of the Martyrs. And one of the things is, as the Chinese pastors were coming to him, he said, we knew we were carrying the cross, we just didn't know why. And I mean, that's yeah. again a part of the theology. And that yeah. others were doing it too. That, right. Isn't that the big thing? Right, yeah. When, yeah. when you meet them, they go, we thought we were the only ones being persecuted. And now you come and share with us that this is a worldwide phenomenon. And so we are part of a whole movement in a sense that's happening. Well, and I know one of the great privileges I've had is I've, as I've shared with persecuted believers about other persecuted believers. You're right. We're, we're not in this uh, alone. Now, for those that would go to missions fest across Canada, uh, we would see the two Pauls. Paul yeah. Johnson and Paul Estabrooks. Uh, we're trying not to one get emotional. Yeah. One of us sitting in the jail. In the jail. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what I would always say. Yeah, the Pauls, you know, from Open Doors. Uh, you lost yeah. not only a colleague, but a very close friend in Paul Johnson. Yeah. And that was, a, that was a, I think, for all of us. And, and there's Paul. And uh, we miss him dearly. Hmm. Back in September, he had a, a motorcycle accident. Yes. Yeah. He joined us in the uh, beginning of 1988 working in Cuba. Uh, supervising our Cuba program at the time and ultimately when I was asked to join Open Doors International he became the Canadian director and for 25 years he was the Canadian director but we worked together so well he was such a good friend and um, we were soulmates in a sense and and uh, just enjoyed being uh, together working at whatever it was mission fest or church meetings or trips or even yeah. traveling. We traveled together in Iran, we traveled in China, and um, a number of other places, Cuba, of course, and many other places together. Well, you, you develop this bond, and you know, some of my closest friends that don't even live in Canada, Tom Zorowski, who mm -hmm. works uh, with Global Response Network in South Sudan, I've traveled with him a couple of times, and we were all together in Winnipeg recently, which was nice, and so these, 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 these friendships are forged in some of the most difficult circumstances, yet Paul was one of those guys that uh, always had a lot of joy, and I think as yeah. I've talked to people yeah. in Canada and the U.S. that knew him, uh, that's the thing that they will say about Paul, that he had a lot of joy. And for me personally, uh, even making the shift to Open Doors Canada, because I'd met with him just a week before he had his motorcycle accident out in Alberta, is that Paul really was a kingdom guy. Oh, very much so. That was his whole passion and his drive. And uh, he, he also loved to sing. He wasn't really much of a singer, but he loved to sing. And he'd have these phrases, you know, and, and one of them, uh, he, he'd be going, you know, down the hall and he'd be singing, just to know, and that's all he would sing, just that expression, <laughs> just to know, and uh, you, you fill in the blanks afterwards. But, but that kind of joy would just kind of bubble out of him all the time. Well, I know he's going to be missed, and, uh, you know, pray for Gary Stagg. He's the new executive director mm. of Open Doors Canada. When you look at what's happening right now in the world, there's, there's just so many things taking place. We can't even keep up to everything. Does that affect the work of working with the persecuted church? Well, it makes the organization grow because there's more and more challenges to meet. And uh, even Brother Andrew says if he'd known how big Open Doors had become, he would never have started it because he didn't want a big organization. He was a kind of an individual, rugged uh, individualist working for the Lord. But um, yes, the, the challenges are growing significantly. Uh, but, but what encourages me is at the meetings we've been at, even within our organization, is the young generation mm -hmm. that's coming along. 
and is also passionate about the persecuted church. And that's, that's the encouraging thing when we see that happen. You know, we both speak in a lot of churches in Canada. And, you know, after a meeting, you, you know, I don't get it as much anymore, but I just didn't know this was going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I would share is we've been talking, at, you know, today at Theology of Persecution, heard Tom's story, and also, you know, some of what God has, you know, taken you through, Paul, is we cannot forget to pray that's that's the key you know point and i would encourage people to go to opendoorsca.org uh, and hear more about uh, what's going on with the persecuted church around the world uh, you can have in your bible you know something every day to pray for it's so very important because as the bible says you know one part of the body suffers we all suffer and and that still goes on today that's very very true so uh, and prayer still is the number one thing that is asked for universally because they really believe god answers prayer that's the passionate thing about them that's, that I always find amazing because they see answers to prayer and they know if we will commit to it, that will be the answer for them. And, you know, the, in this exchange that we have with the persecuted churches it, and the message, it, it strengthens our spirits. Oh, it yeah. encourages them. They're not forgotten. Very, very much so. And, and we, uh, we ask people simply to, to remember them in whatever way they can help. Uh, some people can actually go there like Tom and then get involved. Uh, others support the ministry financially, but everyone can be involved in the prayer movement. Paul, well, I, would, I would congratulate you on your retirement, but I don't think that's true. <laughs> Refirement, right? <laughs> yes. And so yes. you've been a great ambassador. You're, you're a great Thank friend you. to the church and the persecuted church. And uh, many more years, the Lord will give you good health and you'll continue to teach and preach and do that all God has called you to do. Thanks. Just say I appreciate you. You too. God bless you. You too, buddy.